Welcome to part two of the Mesh to NURBS professional workflow videos. I'm going to show you here how to surface the side of the mesh and I'm going to use a different uh, technique for this to just to give, show you a bit of a variety. The first thing I want to do is put a curve down here and I'm going to then pick the curve and move it just to make sure that it's kind of sympathetic to to that line down the the rear of the car and move it forwards to let me just uh, turn up the mesh a little bit I want to better refer to this edge here so I purposely kept my curve within that go into mesh and take this mesh project curve project onto the mesh then we're going to do a similar thing at the front of the car here so it's best not to make that curve too long uh, the angle is the same as the the rear curve so I'm going to just bring that down to there and it needs to be it's important it needs to be within this surface here and not encroaching onto that fillet there in, which is shown in the mesh now mesh project again project the curve we don't need any of these curves so you can delete them as soon as you've done it I've made this curve too long so I'm just going to take the detach tool and detach it there and then delete it. It's important that this curve is on the main part of the surface and doesn't encroach into the fillet there which is included in the mesh. Okay, we can't use these curves to build from but as they have too many spans so let's take the fit curve tool, set it to 3 degree single span with deviation switch on and rebuild that curve with a fit curve and you see the deviation is very small it's 0 0.1 which is perfectly acceptable and we do the same at this end deviation is very small delete the mesh curves next thing I want to do is to extend this curve down to balance it a bit more take a draft surface and with pull direction X produce a surface there like so and now take the align tool to the fit curve. The next job is to pick the hulls and slide them. Actually that one we can leave there because it gives us more control at the, towards the top of the surface. This one is going to move that up a bit and we're going to up the degree of this let's put the controls on let's up the degree of this to 4 and that's fine I think that should give us enough CVs 
time we're going to have a acceptable distance of 4 to start with we're being prompted here to pick the surface and then the mesh and now I want to pick uh, transform CV and hull NUV and then with full sensitivity for the mouse I'm going to put, pick all the hulls I know that they're on the minus side of the mesh because the coloration is down here if they were up there it would be on the positive side of the mesh this doesn't mean anything because there's no mesh behind it to relate to so then we start to pull them out till we see things going our way that's not too bad is it I'm going to slide the hull Okay, we can't move the hulls anymore. We need to move individual CVs now. we're doing quite well now we're going to um, decrease the tolerance to 1 and the ramp distance to 2 and now I want to direct model the surface to fit the mesh so it's NUV and always uh, maximum sensitivity when you get to this stage and we're going to use nudge keys now because the, it, the mouse is too coarse you can use the mouse just to get an idea but then use the nudge keys to give you a self-defined tuning and the colors tell you whether you've got to move in or out and I'm going to pick those two points together sometimes you have to pick several points you can use proportional modification wherever whichever you find is, is quicker so that is in fact not bad there I'm going to use this to try and get rid of that little deviation I've got there and there's a bit of a dip there which I suspect is that point Uh, two things I do before I move on and that is that uh, the spec says I have to be uh, less than one millimeter from the mesh so I've set this tool now to 0.9 and you see that we've got green everywhere we need it so we are within tolerances so that's fine um, three things I should have said that I do the second thing is to look along the CV hull to see whether everything looks in order you know I don't want to see any irregular CVs poking out shutting out or, or 
jutting in and they all look to me they look very they look very neat and you know the secret is in the CVs if, if your work is good the CVs are going to look good it's that simple okay now the next thing then the third thing is to put on the zebra stripes set them to be quite coarse we don't want them on the on the mesh so what we're going to do is just pick the surface and I don't want so many stripes because they're easier to read and give me more information when I have less repeats and let's do it again then that's fine okay Take a look at that. Let's remember that the part of the surface we're going to use is this bit at the top here. So I have to decide now exactly what I'm going to do. And I'm going to use the cross section tool. So we want uh, definitely on X. And let's cut that down on X to one every 250 should do us. We're not going to put all the uh, cross sections on in one go because that will confuse things. Let's have a look along there and it's all looking very orderly isn't it? Very symmetrical and perhaps we can take that point in a bit I think yeah like that that's more logical perhaps that one a tiny little little bit somewhat something something like that yeah and you can see that the model appears to be straightening out here you get a good view so you can see it straightening out towards the back so we'll assume that that is the designer's requirement we can go in here and into this tool we can reduce those because they're a lot less offensive when they're smaller like that you know if you blow them up too big they tend to frighten you don't they and it's very nice like that okay now we're finished with those then so we can take the off in uh, in X and now we want Z And we need more samples so what have we got for Z let's set that to every 200 should do us okay a few more every 150 that's fine and let's have a look what we've got we're looking for you know in evenness in the surface and I think we've got it look it's all beautiful there isn't it you know the sweep on the curvature combs is is even so I think that's a good surface we'll turn off the locators and we'll put on the we'll put on the double horizon shader and this is the one that I consider to be most like car paint that is a bit annoying I admit looking at those so we'll turn off those you just hit clear here to turn off the cross sections when you finish with them so I think that looks nice and if you look carefully you can just see the mesh poking through the surface which is what you would expect to see when when you're close to the mesh yeah I think that's about it If you're working in a studio now, uh, it wouldn't really be your decision because this is such a big, important surface that the designer would definitely want to come along and, uh, you know, have his or her say as to what what went on there. And if there is a wobble in the highlight, then you know you've done your job. You've followed the mesh, so you know this is beautiful, isn't it? But if there's a wobble, you know there might be a little dip here then you've got to get the designer to come along and give you his or her decision on that.
I think that's a good point to wrap up part two of the tutorial and then when I come back we'll uh, extend the surface and then build the blend here and adjust the blend to fit the mesh so thank you very very much for taking the time to watch my video and see you in part three